Uh, hello everyone, a very good evening and a very warm welcome to all the parents and all the listeners of Facebook Live channel of Continue Our Kids. I'm Dr. Himani. I'm a developmental behavioral pediatrician, co-founder and director at Continue Our Kids. So today I have taken up this very, very interesting topic with not just interest, um, a parent of a child with neurodevelopmental concerns, but probably for each and every parent. So uh, play is a very important aspect of a child's life. And why is it so important uh, is because um, the, it's very essential for development of different areas of uh, the development of a child, like cognitive development, physical development, their social development, emotional well-being of a child. So play plays a very essential part in helping the child develop in all these de different developmental domains. Now play, according to United Nations Health Commission, is also being identified as a human right for every child. So just imagine how important it is that each and every child must get the opportunity to play. And keeping them devoid of play is like keeping them away from their right, human rights. So it's very important. Now, uh, what does play do? It provides an opportunity for parents to engage with their child. So playing is not just important for the child, but it also helps in building a, a certain amount of relationship with the parent. It definitely helps in healthy brain development. And through play, we can engage with the child, interact with the child. And at the same time, the child also through play learns to interact and engage with the environment around them. For children who are a little shy or maybe a little less verbal, those children are able to express their views, their experiences, even sometimes their frustrations through their play. So it provides them an opportunity uh, to express themselves and also gives us pa or parents an uh, understanding of their perspective. So play is important. Now there are different types of plays uh, which uh, are uh, listed and sometimes we get confused. Should my child start, how should my child start playing at this age? What could be the nature of play when my child is two years of age or how should my child be playing or how should I as a parent play with the child? So uh, the most common type of play which uh, children are observed to be doing is the free play. And believe it, free play is extremely important because it allows the child to have ample of time. Unscheduled play it is. It is independent. They are not under any guidance uh, or they are not under any commands to play. It's a non-screen time and it can be extremely creative. It can reflect upon uh, the child's uh, thinking and creativity and it can also decompress a lot of their uh, uh, emotions. So it is extremely important free play. So, uh, yes, at the same time, while the child is playing uh, freely, the parents certainly need to monitor their safety. Uh, a large proportion of that play uh, that the child is having shouldn't be adult directed. That's important to know. So the play which is not adult directed is free play. And we must discourage the use of passive entertainment. What are those passive sources? We all have it in our houses. The TV, iPad, mobiles, computer games, and desktops. So those are all passive sources of entertainment. They are not included in free play. Please mark it. Any kind of a screen time is not a part of free play. True toys, such as blocks, maybe dolls or stacking toys. These are the toys, maybe paints, brushes. So these are the objects which uh, stimulate a child's imagination. And these are the uh, toys which are far more beneficial than passive uh, kind of uh, entertainment. So the, there's another type of play which is more organized play, which 
appear somewhere when they are in their late toddlerhood where they have to play with other children and group activities start coming into play somewhere between 2 to 2.5 to 3 years of age the play starts becoming more organized but when a baby is born at that time mostly for the first 3 months the play is unoccupied play so what happens in this uh, phase is that the baby is not occupied that's simply lying on the bed and they are just uh, covering up for the basic essential needs like feeding pooping and sleeping through the night and they are completely unoccupied so it's an unoccupied play now from 3 months onwards till 18 months the play becomes solitary play where what is solitary play uh, where the baby spends most of the time playing on their own they want to play be with themselves they are busy in playing on their own and they may notice another child or an adult sitting next to them but typically they will be playing on their own grabbing objects watching them exploring them um, uh, through their hands they would just uh, the rattles or any any of the toys that they are playing with now as they grow up a little bit then uh, they are in their toddlerhood they are uh, also seen to be having onlooker play which is very interesting term onlooker is the child is sitting and watches other children play they are learning to relate with the other ch children and by watching them how they are playing so uh, they also sometimes through by hearing understand the language uh, try they would be happier looking at other children playing instead of going and joining them in the play then comes the parallel play so somewhere between again this 18 months onwards to toddler years two years of age the child would start begin or would begin to play alongside another child but without any interaction so that's called as parallel play maybe an adult is, uh, is sitting next to the child or another child is sitting next to the child and they both are doing the child is playing uh, on their own they are all right having another adult or a child sitting next to them but that's a parallel play parallel they are sitting parallel but not really interacting at this stage Parallel play provides a lot of opportunities for the child to do role modeling, role playing, as in dressing their doll or playing with their teddy bear, doing things and activities which their parents or adults do to them and role modeling those activities on their uh, toys, through their toys, pretending to play. So pretend play is develops in this uh, uh, period of parallel play. And it also gives them a lot of understanding of uh, this is my toy, this is my teddy, this is my doll. So my concept starts emerging here in the during the parallel play uh, period. Then uh, we also get to observe associative play. What is associative play? This comes a little later in the years, somewhere between three to four years of age where a child is interested in another ch uh, child for playing so they may borrow the toys they may share the toys with another child and they would start socializing also with other children in, during associative play and say this is also sometimes called as loosely organized play so early phase of group activities and organized play is associative play mostly it uh, helps the children in their preschool years uh, while when they are learning the do's and don'ts uh, and uh, and the orders of the adults when the, uh, the do's and don'ts that they have to follow so associative play also teaches them the art of sharing uh, it encourages a lot of language development it helps in problem solving skills and it also builds a certain amount of cooperation uh, with other children, with other adults in which who are engaging with the child in that associative play. Then comes the very important part, social play. So children around the age of three years uh, are beginning to socialize with other children. They want to interact with other children in different play settings. They learn the social rules of give and take, 
sharing cooperation uh, they are able to share their toys their ideas with other children so uh, this is also a very important aspect social play then expressive play is another term which is there where the child learns to express their feelings while playing so parents can use different materials uh, different kinds of toys like paints crayons colored pencils or markers they can use different textures such as clay or water or a spongy object uh, these different textures give them um, uh, an idea to express then bean bags uh, different kind of um, uh, rhythmic toys instruments such toys help the child to uh, play with the to toys and at the same time express their emotion like if you are playing an instrument the child likes it you'll get to see a beautiful expression a live expression on their face or wow what a lovely sound it has come so and at the same time using parent if they use certain vocabulary uh, where they are trying to share or express their emotions while playing the child learns and grabs that vocabulary uh, the emotional vocabulary where which can be then used to express their own emotions uh, as they grow up so expressive play is again very a uh, beautiful part of play then fantasy play which we all have done as kids and now we also can uh, see our children fantasizing things uh, as in fantasizing situations and trying to uh, get their car going through a bridge and then through the mountains they will they will fantasize the play and play so it triggers a lot of imagination creativity for the child and sometimes the child may assume uh, themselves as adults and then role model that behavior and that uh, abstract methods of thinking would get triggered in their brain so fantasy plays again a very uh, important uh, kind of a play that you would observe in your children. Then comes the cooperative play. Cooperative play where it mostly seen in preschool uh, period where the child would have an organized group activity where the group will have certain goals to establish. Sare bache milkar ek particular activity kar rahe, group activity and there is one leader and there can be somebody going in and out of the group so all these uh, uh, helps them with the so forming a social relationship, following the rules of the game, and they begin to take risks in the game. They start taking decisions in the game. So uh, these different kinds of play uh, are just the terms, but for parents, it's important to understand that play definitely triggers different uh, types of development in the child different domains of development get stimulated they learn to socialize they learn to express their emotions through play through toys they will form a bond with the parent because forming a bond with the parent is important they learn a lot of vocabulary they would learn to express uh, and communicate learn language receptive as well as expressive language both uh, the languages the child will uh, learn and it uh, the play definitely through different ways and means stimulates different domains of development for a child so now yeah the the uh, thing that keeps coming to our mind is that um, why sh how to play with the child and why should we play with the child so uh, what happens is the moment a baby is born we are expected somewhere uh, to speak 21,000 words per day with the baby or the child for them to have good linguistic skills and communication skills later in their lives. To establish that, just extrapolate and think, have you spoken those many words every day with your child? So those are the number of words you need to talk. And you don't need a separate one hour or two hours to engage with the child to speak that much. Just use your routine day to play, to interact with your child bathing time can also have a lot of interaction and communication and talking time with the child routine activities like feeding them you can speak a lot even a small baby who's lying in bed if you talk and converse they'll also coo and babble and give those responses uh, to the parent uh, trying to as if trying to understand what we are trying to communicate or speak to them 
so they do understand so that stimulates the development of speech and language for the child much early on toys gives are a means when we are trying to fix a toy together it helps us with our dexterity it helps us with our uh, sensory we touch uh, the object we uh, take some sensory input from the toy and it stimulates our sensory system tactile sensory system because we are touching feeling trying to uh, feel different shapes of the toys uh, it stimulates our cognitive function intelligence problem solving abilities because we are trying to fix the toy or put it in a certain way uh, so it definitely playing with the child uh, has a huge impact in uh, and it helps in development of various domains of uh, a child so not just our children who are typically developing but every child has a right to play be it independent play or interactive play certain kinds of play the child would learn as they grow up and these different kinds of play that we have discussed today the child these may start emerging on their own but for a child who has some kind of a neurodevelopmental disorder like autism or social communication delays there uh, we need to be uh, extra, we need to put in a little extra effort because there we need to get their attention but play definitely helps them really uh, uh, relax it relieves them of the anxiety of not being able to express and communicate because a lot of expression can happen through their play they tend to communicate a lot of things to play so it's very relaxing for them and at the same time play builds a relationship with the parent and the child is able to learn through that play the child is able to learn to look at you to look at you again and again through through the toys to listen to your commands and instructions that you are giving to your child as to how to play or place the objects then uh, it also uh, helps the child to build joint attention because the child has to now share the object with which the child is uh, playing with you so sharing of the attention from object to the person and then back to the object which we also called as joint attention so that will also start building in through play through toys reading books out using paints crayons different textures of toys building blocks and uh, playing with a do doll or a teddy bear or a musical instrument or uh, maybe a, a piano or um, a flute anything like this would definitely stimulate uh, the child's various domains of development it stimulates their language their creativity uh, so it's extremely important that we emphasize again and again on uh, the play and its importance it definitely allows the child to be creative it triggers their emo uh, emotion imagination and as they grow up and they go into a group they tend to learn uh, different aspects of a group how to negotiate how to solve a problem how to share with the peer um, and how to work in a group so all these practices are uh, also playing helps them to make decisions uh, and they discover their own pace as to how fast or slow i am and it also uh, they learn about their own interests what is the kind of game that they want to play so uh, play is i believe extremely important part of a child's development which should not be ignored and as parents we should take a lead in uh, setting up uh, place situations and settings for the child spend some time every day with toys and play and interact with your child uh, just leaving them passively sometimes on ground with the toys uh, may not help unstructured play uh, is healthy but at the same time for children with neurodevelopmental disorders uh with them we need to keep getting their attention um uh, and they are so object oriented uh, they do not look at us they lack somewhere in their social interactions and skills so then the objects are the best method the toys are the best methods to uh, be able to gain some attention from them to be able to form an eye contact build a interaction with the child through that toy or object that they are interested in so mostly we must emphasize at picking up a toy to begin with when we begin playing with the child we should look at what the child is interested in instead of 
make taking our decisions okay come on let's play with this particular toy no so when you are beginning to play with the child at that stage you allow the child to be to just roam around and figure out what they want to touch what they want to play with and uh, let the child develop some amount of tolerance uh, towards you towards your presence around them when they are playing so once they start developing that tolerance of you being around when they are playing uh, then you can use the same toy in which the child is interested um in starting an interactive play so from parallel play where you are sitting next to the child and the child is playing with a certain toy you are not directing the child to um, to how to play with that particular child toy we are gradually scaling up towards playing an interactive play with the child through the toy which the child is playing or liking so we want the child to believe that okay i like the way you are playing and i want to play with you in the same way that you are playing so that makes the child extremely comfortable and then they want to play with you because they know oh mama or papa or dad i understands how what game i am playing and they also like to play the way i play so then that uh, builds their confidence and they will give you an opportunity to enter their play space and allow you to play with them or their toys their favorite toys and from there you will further scale up to uh, making conversation or uh, speaking small phrases sentences or words around their favorite toy or if there is a car that the child is playing you can take the car around and say boom boom and sounds like that attracts their attention towards us and that bit starts building an interactive play so with one toy also we can talk about different aspects okay this is the door this is the window of the car and uh, this is the blue, blue color car which uh, the car goes vroom vroom these are the wheels how many wheels are there so if you just look at one small piece of a car or a car one small car toy car that you are trying to play with the child you can build so many sentences so many words vocabulary around that one car so that is what play does that is how play helps in teaching children uh, various aspects of development the child will look at you with bright eyes when you say broom broom and that eye contact will gradually build they will look at your expressions your emotions and that will start the initiation of a social interaction between you and the child and they'll try and copy imitate the words that you are saying they'll hear they'll process the information that you are using or the words you are using that's how the receptive language will start building up for our children with neurodevelopment disorders so we need to play uh, and use our own creative ways to get your the child's attention because these opportunities uh, not only help in form, uh, forming a bond with the parent but uh, it also helps the child in um, uh, being able to express themselves to they they learn to solve problems and give them more and more opportunities to interact so let's play with our children and have lots of fun not only does play relieves uh, the stress of uh, of our child but uh, if you attempt playing with your child you'll forget all the worries that you have probably from uh, carrying all the worries uh, from your workspace uh, to the home environment you'll forget them for some time so your anxiety will also come down i believe uh, that each and every one can use that opportunity enjoy the uh, enjoy the parenthood play with your children uh enjoy playing with your children because it will build a lot of skills for them i think uh, that is all we had to play uh, we had to talk about play <laughs> and uh, we'll take up some questions we have a lot of questions here today so good evening hi anjali angela deep hello everyone bhavna hello uh, and we have swapna das Uh, she's asking 
my three year old son does not like to scribble with colors and pencils how to encourage him to color or draw so swapna that's a very interesting question uh, if your child does not like uh, to color with a pencil or a crayon uh, try using paint brush or try uh, using finger painting so dip your child's finger in the color and let the child do finger painting let the child get uh, develop some liking for those co colors around and once the child starts liking those colors the child will would want to then hold on to the crayons and attempt coloring with the crayons so you can uh, explore other methods uh, hand uh, painting or uh, finger painting or maybe uh, cutting um, vegetable into a certain uh, shape and then putting it in the color and then uh, putting the vegetable painting so those methods you can try uh, if the child likes them uh, enjoys engaging in those methods then you can slowly move on to crayons and other pencils uh, Ekta Kaushik is asking, my daughter is three years old and she's happy playing with her own like free play. Uh, she do like interact in interact intervention of she, she do not she do likes intervention of anyone. She do play with boards, balls, anything which attracts her with similar color. She does not interact with other kids and love to be on her own in her own world. So Ekta, the important thing here is the child likes to play. The child likes to engage with the toys. The child likes to play with the toys. At least the free play part is there. But now your child being three years old is heading into toddler, is a toddler. And uh, by three years would or should be probably starting uh, to engage with other children or start with social play or interactive play uh, at this age. So. Uh, this is where we need to give them more opportunities probably. So what has happened in COVID era is that most of the children have been locked up inside the houses. Their preschools are not open. They are not going to play areas or play uh, zones. So they're not really getting those many opportunities to be around other children or to initiate a play, an interactive play with other children. So start creating those opportunities for them. Take them to the play area. Uh, play zones where they have other children of their age group you can arrange play dates uh, another child of the same uh, age group can be invited to your play so you can be to uh, visit them and uh, uh, allow them to spend some time together so that they can initiate interactive play sometimes you need to prompt them a little uh, to begin interactive play because there has been a gap and now the child is not really interested in interacting with anyone else so that can be done but if still the child does not respond to all these uh, then i would recommend go and visit a developmental pediatrician to be able to find out if the child has any social delay or not that will be important uh, janbi saying hello hello janbi anjali is anjali here is asking ma'am my son is 5.6 but he playing only family members not others so Anjali, you need to give your child more opportunities to go out and play and interact with other children, uh, with cousins maybe, or uh, in play areas. Uh, give the child that confidence of greeting uh, everyone who's coming across. If you remember when we all were kids, uh, we were told by our parents that uncle ko, auntie ko, jobi raste mein milenge, sabko namaste karna hai, hello karna hai, salam karna hai. But now when uh, we have grown up and become parents, how often do we tell our children to do that, to, see, to greet another person? So greeting is the first step of communication or initiating a conversation or a communication. So start emphasizing on teaching our children to greet whoever they are meeting when they are uh, going from their house to another house or to play space be it a guard standing outside, be it an uncle or an auntie in the lift, teach your child to greet everyone. Right? That will reduce their first step of uh, social anxiety and it will help them to start a social interaction or a conversation. So creating more opportunities is our job. 
भावना इज आस्किंग मैम अगर बच्चा बच्चों में जाना नहीं पसंद करता है उस स्टेज के लिए कैसे उसको दूसरे बच्चों के साथ इन्वॉल्व करें सो so, अगर बच्चा बहुत सारे बच्चों में जाना नहीं पसंद करता है तो आप एक बच्चा कोई मार्क कर सकते हैं जो उनको उन सब बच्चों में ज्यादा पसंद हो मे बी उसके साथ एक बच्चे के साथ शुरू कीजिए उनका इंटरेक्शन छोटे ग्रुप में शुरू कीजिए इंटरेक्शन जहाँ पे उनको एक कंफर्ट जोन मिले बहुत बड़े ग्रुप में कभी कभी बच्चा स्केर्ड हो जाता है एंशियस हो जाता है विलिंग नहीं होता है टू होल्ड इंटरक्शन सो देन दैट बिकम्स अ चैलेंज एंड दैट दे ट्राई टू अवॉइड रीचिंग आउट फॉर द ग्रुप थोड़ा सा प्रॉम्प्ट करेंगे री इनफोर्स करेंगे एवरी अटेम्प्ट द चाइल्ड मेक्स टू एंगेज जो भी वो छोटा सा भी एफर्ट करेगा अगर इंटरेक्ट करने का अगर आप उसको री इनफोर्स कर देंगे पॉजिटिवली वेरी गुड वेल डन आपने बहुत अच्छा किया आज और तो बच्चा मोटिवेट होता है वो चीज रिपीट करने के लिए सो आई थिंक दैट इज हाउ यू कैन टेक इट फॉरवर्ड भावना इज ऑल्सो आस्किंग डज नॉट लाइक टेडी एंड एनी अदर टॉय सो ट्राई एंड फाइंड आउट भावना सबसे पहले आपको ये देखना है कि बच्चे को आपके बच्चे को क्या अच्छा लगता है टॉय नहीं अच्छा लगता कोई बर्तन अच्छा लगता है पेन अच्छा लगता है रस्सी अच्छा लगता है क्योंकि बहुत सारे ऑटिज्म स्पेक्ट्रम पे बच्चे होते हैं जिनको टॉयज में इंटरेस्ट ना होके सराउंडिंग ऑब्जेक्ट्स में इंटरेस्ट होता है रोजमर्रा की चीजों में इंटरेस्ट होता है उनके साथ खेलना होता है उनको बजाना होता है तो आपको जो बच्चे को पसंद है उस प्ले से स्टार्ट करना है आपको डायरेक्ट नहीं करना है बच्चे को बच्चे को खेलने दो उसको जो चीज अच्छी लगती है उसके पास जाके बैठो उसको खेलने दो बच्चा पहले एक्सेप्ट तो करे कि आप उसके तरह खेल सकते हो उसके खेल को अंडरस्टैंड करते हो उसके दायरे में घुसना है आपको जब आप घुसेंगे उसके दायरे में अंडरस्टैंड करेंगे बच्चे के खेल को और बच्चे को कॉन्फिडेंस देंगे कि हाँ तुम जो खेल रहे हो मैं भी उसी तरह से खेलना पसंद करती हूँ और मुझे अच्छा लगता है तो बच्चे को कॉन्फिडेंस आ जाएगा अच्छा इसको मेरा गेम समझ में आ रहा है इनको मेरा खेलना समझ में आ रहा है let them watch me let them see me play and let them maybe next time play with me so wo gradual progression hoga par aap first day se direct karenge ki ye nahi ye khelo bachcha kabhi bhi nahi khelega aapke sath mein don't be a director to their play let them play you enter their zone gain their confidence and then bring them into your zone or your liking acha aapne jab unka khel khel liya इंटरेक्शन बिल्ड हो गया तब जब आप उनका आप आपका कोई टॉय लेके जाएंगे उनके साथ खेलने के लिए तो वो इंटरेस्ट दिखाएंगे क्योंकि अब तक उन आपका आपने उनका कॉन्फिडेंस गेन कर लिया है खेलने के लिए राइट सो हाय गजल शिवाली शर्मा गुड इवनिंग ओके वी हैव हियर हाउ टू इम्प्रूव आई कॉन्टेक्ट इन गेम and usse pehle gazal is asking my 2.5 year is taking occupational therapy that's fine gazal and how to improve your you are only asking how to improve eye contact in game so as i said when you are playing with your child uh, always try to find out what the child likes let's suppose if a child likes a particular toy or an object you can just get the object that object that the child likes at your eye level make the child sit at your eye level don't uh, let the child uh, be seated on the floor and you are sitting on a chair or even if both of you are sitting on the floor then also the child has to look up like this to make an eye contact that's an extra effort for the child but at the same time if the child is sitting at your eye level you will increase the chance possibility of the child looking at you your face your eyes probably and then getting the toy or an object of his choice at this level the child will look at this and once it goes away it will give them an opportunity to look at your face and then bringing it back so things like this and then helping them track okay this is the car they like the car the car is going right in front of my eyes and then going on the other side so they are interested in toys objects you need to use that object bring it at your eye level and give child more opportunities to look at your face right so those are some one of the strategies which can be followed there are many more strategies to improve and increase the eye contact we'll try using this one uh mr bhattacharya is asking good evening ma'am we are from calcutta do you have any clinic branch in calcutta i am appointing you 
video consultation is definitely possible i'm sorry we do not have a branch as yet in calcutta but um, we have all our contact details in the videos uh, and you can definitely reach out to these contact details they'll help you uh, fix a video consultation uh, with the, uh, the doctors so you can definitely do that alternating is there any alternate of therapy so if you are in a place where you're not able to procure therapy then you can use uh, the dough at home use uh, you can the the consistency of the dough so therapy has different consistency according to the color code of therapy so what you can do is have a different consistency of the dough that you prepare aap dough ko sakhat bana dijiye maide ka dough bana lijiye आप सॉफ्ट डो बना लीजिए फॉर इट टू बी लूज एंड स्टिकी एंड मे बी सॉफ्टर टू हैंडल यू कैन मेक अ थिक हार्ड डो फॉर इट टू बी लिटिल डिफिकल्ट टू पुट अ कॉइन इन साइड सो डो यूज कर सकते हैं आप आटे का और मैदे का अलग अलग कंसिस्टेंसी और सॉफ्टनेस उसके अंदर यू कैन चेंज द सॉफ्टनेस ऑफ द डो इफ यू डोंट हैव एक्सेस टू थेरापोटी but uh, and uh, then we have another question how to con confirm his child has autism is there any clinical test uh, so tanima we do not have as such a blood test or a clinical test but we do have uh, assessment methods evaluation methods and uh, tools and uh, questionnaires which are used along with the expertise of the professional who is observing the child so a good behavioral observation of the child a good detailed history taking and then applying some standardized questionnaires uh, which can be used to evaluate the symptoms their presence uh, and uh, then the severity of the symptoms so that part can be done using standardized diagnostic assessment questionnaires and tools now along with the behavioral observation and clinical observation of an expert so that's how we make a diag we do not have a blood test or a uh, eeg or a genetic test to be able to do it and find out okay this is what it is no specific test ekta koshik is asking there is a speech delay too she does not interact with anyone uh or use sign language and uh, just use a sign language to complete her work so if your child is using just the sign language and not speaking anything then you first thing that you have to do is get a hearing test done for your child make sure that the hearing is absolutely fine and then uh get a detailed development evaluation or assessment for your child to be able to find out what is the cause for speech delay these two things are important before we move ahead mohit is asking uh, hello ma'am good evening please suggest some interactive play or activities for my 3 year old to improve his social and communication skills okay so mohit uh, for a 3 year old child i believe a 3 year old child has um uh, a lot of communication language skills they have uh, they can speak three to four word phrases all together they understand instructions so any uh, game where we are uh, uh, like catching and throwing a ball target hitting activities uh, building blocks or uh, 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 hurdle crossing activities then uh, some sensory activities where the child is playing with dough making things out of dough and uh, uh, pretend play activities so reading out books to your child um and then uh, so oh, there there are a lot of play and interactive activities when you are storytelling you can use small small books uh, where there are small one liner stories one lines on the on each page and you tell them a story uh, through social story uh, through the book reading out a book that will initiate a lot of engagement and interaction with the child so uh, using all these toys coloring activities you can use um a uh, picture of uh, uh, color the picture activity so but you have to be there when the child is doing the activity to reinforce every time so any play that you do with your child you have to be there to give them a positive reinforcement to interact with them to say wow well done uh, so that the child looks at you every time and that interaction is on all the time when you are playing with the child 
that is more important part than selecting the toys <laughs> satish mr satish is asking mera beta 5 saal ka hai khane ki cheeze share nahi karta kisi bhi bacche ke sath bacche ko sharing kaise sikhaye okay so uh, agar 5 saal ka hai to aap unke sath pehle aap share karna shuru kariye aur unko model karke dikhao ki sharing kaise hota hai and sharing gives a lot of happiness and it is a good thing and even if he makes a slightest of attempt to share at any stage aap usko bahut tareef ke sath usko bahut acknowledgement dijiye taki wo motivate ho next time share karne ke liye usko criticize kam karo motivate zyada karo that will help the child to share what happens is once we know that the child is not sharing we tend to criticize them much more than trying to motivate or Uh, uh them to be able to do that so motivate your child more Criti- don't criticize them even little bit of sharing that they do just say wow you're such a, a kind hearted child you have shared this with me right uh bhavna ne likha thank you thank you very much bhavna uh, for participating uh समार सम्राट इज आस्किंग हेलो मैम टीवी और मोबाइल से कैसे रोकें मेरा बेबी 3.9 पॉइंट नाइन ईयर्स का है ऑटिस्टिक है ओके सो टी वी एंड मोबाइल आई बिलीव आर वेरी पैसिव एंटरटेनमेंट एंड एक्टिविटीज विच डू नॉट इनिशिएट एनी काइंड ऑफ एन इंटरक्शन फॉर द चाइल्ड सो इफ एट ऑल यू आर नॉट एबल टू रियली रिमूव योर चाइल्ड ऑफ दीज टू थिंग्स यू कैन ट्राई यूजिंग दम एज अ री एनफोर्सर एंड गिव दम फॉर अ शॉर्ट ड्यूरेशन एम टेक दम ऑफ एंड आप उसको धीरे 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 करके टाइम ड्यूरेशन कम कीजिए एकदम से अगर आप छीन लेंगे या आप आज चार घंटा टीवी दिखा रहे हैं और कल से आप टीवी बंद कर देंगे निकाल के रख देंगे तो बच्चे कभी कभी बहुत ट्रोमेटाइज फील करते हैं सो फर्स्ट इज के वो टीवी का स्क्रीन टाइम को धीरे धीरे करके रिड्यूस करना शुरू कर दो उस टाइम में उसके साथ इंटरक्टिव प्ले करना शुरू करो या प्ले करना शुरू करो जो भी बच्चे का प्ले का लेवल है उस लेवल से प्ले करना शुरू करो uh and uh, the screen time can be used as a reinforcer okay, okay we'll see this for 5 minutes let's finish this activity first right and the teen tv time can be video calling which is in in social interaction ho raha hai jisme or tv time can be interactive jisme aap story bata rahe ho unko jo tv mein chal raha hai ya kuch point out kar rahe ho ya kuch conversation kar rahe ho around that tv activity so that can really help uh or uh, then this next question will be ma'am is it possible to make assessment when the child is autistic or not uh, through video consultation so in video consultation i'll just briefly explain what we do we intake all the history or all the questions that we have from you your concerns will be noted down first we'll try to look at the child through the video uh, uh, during video consultation we'll tell you to focus the camera on the child and let the child play around do activities we'll ask you a lot of questions around the queries that we would have or uh, as per the questionnaires that we will be using we'll rely we rely a lot on the information which is given to us by the parents and the next thing that you can do is you can have small video clippings of your child playing and doing different activities any concerning behavior that you observe make small small clips and share that with us then cu- collecting all that information together we form a uh, assessment report uh, based on that and we provide guidance then these assessments mostly do need reevaluation and reassessments but we'll know at least the basic level of a child from where we need to start intervention what we need to teach and what how we can progress help the child progress uh, and learn new things so uh, i i believe any kind of an uh, evaluation uh, will be the beginning for a uh, a process at least where you will start working with the child so that has to be initiated if more information is re- needed the doctor or the personal person who's in uh, looking at the child making a video consultation will let you know okay this child definitely has to go for a physical observation so that all will be but mostly it can happen on video with, with if the parents share some small video clips with the professional गायत्री इज आस्किंग मेरी बेटी साढ़े पांच साल की है एंड शी इज माइल्ड ऑटिज्म थ्री इयर्स हो गया है एट करने पर कुछ एक्टिविटीज 
करने के टाइम में वो बहुत हंसती है ओके ओके दैट्स I didn't really understand the Hindi word that you've written in, in it, but uh, uh, if she's happy doing certain activities, is okay. Mild autism hai. Sometimes emotions are not very balanced, uh, and they can have unexplained emotional responses to certain activities, which is a part of uh, the uh, neurodevelopmental condition that the child has. And um, if it is happening too often, then we need to uh, apply some behavioral strategies to be able to reduce it. uh that can be discussed uh, you can make a list of those behaviors and then we can help you how to handle or manage or modify them uh that is all i would like to say gayatri pooja is asking ma'am could you please suggest some interactive activities for my 18 month old child so an 18 month old child typically has four to five meaningful words uh in their language and they understand they have a lot of receptive uh, skills so again Uh, having a uh, small activities like um, building blocks one over the other, teaching them body parts, telling them about nose, eyes, ears, using small singing them rhymes or music, singing music to them, or piling activities where they have to stack uh, the toys one over the other, uh, join the objects like blocks, joining the blocks and then removing them. Uh, those kinds of activities. uh then um, maybe kicking a ball activity climbing the stairs up and down trying to cross the hurdle creating a path for the child to cross so th those kinds of activity and uh, maybe scribbling giving them a crayon or a paint brush to uh, scribble or paint something on on a piece of paper can help then uh, you can read out small small uh, cardboard books or flash cards to your child because that helps in improving their receptive language skills they learn to uh, uh, their vocabulary increases the receptive language skills get better so all these things you can do we'll take up one more my 8 year uh, special kid doesn't like to play with his friends uh, in fact he doesn't like to play anything if he starts playing something he gets bored very fast how can i help him so hi priya uh, so 8 uh, year old we need to work at consistency and maybe he loses interest in the activity that he is doing and or the person who is making him do that activity he loses interest in that so we need to mm, continue to make that activity more and more interesting for the child to be able to sustain his attention and interest and uh, uh, then if he gets bored or switches very quickly from one act to another and is not able to pay attention at one task then sometimes we need to also look at if the child has inattention major inattention or associated adhd symptoms which may require some medical support or um, uh, medications to uh, help so that part also can be looked into Anjali is again asking 5.6 year old throwing kaise reduce karu therapy ke baad kam ho gaya tha again throw karne lagta hai to aapko dekhna hai anjali ke throw kab karta hai bachcha a b c is the secret a is aap pehle dekho ke throwing ke pehle kya action hota hai kya activities hoti hai antecedent kya hai aur c is throw ke throwing ke baad aapka reaction kya hota hai aur bachche ko kya chahiye jis time pe wo throw karta hai uska kya need hai demand hai जो वो कम्युनिकेट नहीं कर पाते तो वो थ्रो करते हैं टू गेट योर अटेंशन और एब बिहेवियर करते हैं टू गेट योर अटेंशन आपका अटेंशन मिलता है फिर आप समझते हैं कि उनको क्या चाहिए और वो एग्जीक्यूट होता है सो ए बी सी देखना है बिहेवियर थ्रोइंग है उसके पहले क्या हो रहा है और उसके बाद क्या हो रहा है और वो ए और सी को मॉडिफाई करना है हमको बी को मॉडिफाई करने के लिए ठीक है एंड अंजलि यू कैन मे बी कम इट्स बीन अ वेरी लॉन्ग टाइम दैट वी हैव मेट सो मे बी यू कैन कम समाइम्स Uh, and uh, bring uh, your son who's grown up now to 5.6 years and we can have a review and help you with all the queries that you have uh tuhina is asking ma'am my son is 6 year adhd snatches toys from his younger brother how to stop his habit um if he's snatching toys from his younger brother i would say you need to um uh, start forming a relationship of love between both of them start giving him responsibility a child with adhd will do very well when you give them responsibility so you are the bigger one you are the elder one you're grown up and mama relies on you i uh, think you can uh, 
you can help me do this that motivates them from inside and they'll be like yes i will take care i will look after everything so that kind of an attitude giving them responsibility uh, can help them do better and they'll take care of the younger ones then so i believe that is all for the day and um, there is some last question we'll just go through that ma'am please open your therapy center in washi mumbai okay mere bete ko jo growth gurgaon mein thi bombay mein aakar wo nahi hui hai okay pooja thank you uh, for your uh, support uh, and uh, uh if we get an opportunity we'll definitely try and do that uh and for now keep watching our videos whatever help we can provide you from a distance we are happy to do that uh and i'm thank you to everyone who have attended today's session and i hope i have been uh able to answer some of your queries uh through our uh, live session today and stay tuned in we will be seeing you every saturday with something new uh, and some new topic to uh guide you uh, through this mode uh, thank you so much and have a uh, good night i have